just sheer fact that everything is better with butter. The tenderness of cookies, the flakiness of your pie crust, or the smoothness of your sauces, or basically any sweet or savory dish, is because of butter. But for being such a kitchen staple, people hardly know anything about it. Oh, and worse, some have been misinformed about it. So in this video, I'm gonna share 10 things grandma knew about butter that you should too so that you can use it better, make it yourself, and keep it fresher longer. I'm talking years longer. There are only a few things worse in a southern or made from scratch kitchen, one of them being that you forgot to soften your butter. When you go to sit down at the table and that's the moment you realize that you can't spread butter on your pancakes or your biscuits or your freshly baked bread because it's still sitting rock hard in the fridge? Oh, it's heartbreaking and you ask yourself, is the meal even gonna be worth it? Ah, I don't care what you say, microwaving does not achieve the same perfectly spreadable softness. So do what grandma did, which was to never put it in the fridge in the first place because it just stayed on the counter in this thingamajig. It's called a butter keeper and get this, it's been around since the 16th century. So grandma's wondering where you been. The butter crock, also known as a butter bell or butter keeper, is a two-piece contraption that has a bell-shaped top and a cup-shaped bottom that's filled with a bit of cold water. This protects the surface of the butter from contact with light and oxygen, the enemies of preservation. This is what keeps your butter fresh on the counter for up to 40 days at a time. All you do is change the water once a week. To begin, soften a stick of butter on the counter. It needs to be soft in order to mold it into the bell. Once that's done, add water to the crock. Not much, just enough to line up with the butter so that it's airtight. Then place the bell upside down inside the crock where it will be waiting until you need it. Butter crocks range from simple to ultra fancy, but they all work the same. I recently found one at my local thrift store for two bucks. Once you get one, you'll wonder how you ever lived without it. our first time meeting. Hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm here to help you start canning and preserving your own delicious ingredients right at home and share ways to use your home camp pantry and meals your family will love. Granny knew how to make her own butter, which always impressed at Sunday brunch. And neither she nor I are going to take any grief about why you aren't doing it yet. That's right, no excuses like, I don't have any time. Good, you don't need it because it only takes minutes. Well, I already buy organic butter. Excellent, but organic cream is cheaper than store-bought organic butter, so you could be getting more for your money. It's just butter. No, no it's not. Before it becomes butter, you'll get homemade whipped cream, which is perfect for your desserts or your coffee. You'll have raw butter that you can use to make compound or spice butter, regular buttermilk, or a never ending supply of cultured buttermilk. Yeah, never ending. Check it out. Using a stand mixer makes a quick job of churning homemade butter. All you need is heavy cream, which you'll add to the mixing bowl. Then start the mixer on the slowest setting, gradually raising the speed to the fastest setting. The cream will go through three stages, soft peaks, then stiff peaks, and finally the butter solids, which will separate from the buttermilk. Whenever I make butter, I can never resist stopping to fill a jar with homemade whipped cream. Let me tell you, this is such a treat to have on hand, especially because the store-bought stuff is filled with synthetic fillers that only mimic the natural thickness of homemade whipped cream. It's a noticeable difference that you can taste in your morning cup of coffee or a tea. Let's get back to the butter. Here's where you'll start to see the butter solids separate. And from time to time, I encourage you to stop and scrape the sides of the bowl to ensure that everything gets mixed. You'll also likely need to throw a towel on your mixer to ensure that none of the liquids splash out. Now, once you see those butter solids, stop the stand mixer and pour out the buttermilk. Now, just to be clear, this is actually traditional sweet cream buttermilk, which is the initial byproduct of butter making. It's thinner and has a sweeter, more subtle flavor than the cultured buttermilk found in grocery stores. Making your own cultured or fermented buttermilk from scratch even just once means you can ditch the overpriced store stuff for good, plus you get all the health benefits from the cultures and probiotics. Start with buttermilk or any milk, then add two cups of it to a pint-sized jar and inoculate it with one and a half to two tablespoons of cultured buttermilk. Stir to combine and then put a breathable cover like a lid or cheesecloth over the top to avoid dirt or bugs, and then just leave it out on the counter at room temperature for eight to 12 hours or until you start to see bubbles form. You can let this ferment go for up to 24 hours if it needs to thicken a bit more, then just store it in the fridge and use it for almost anything. Just remember to keep some of your cultured buttermilk in reserve so that you can start the next batch when you need it. The other morning I made biscuits and y'all, it feels so good to always have real buttermilk on hand. Transfer the butter to fine cheesecloth or a sieve set over a large bowl. 
Use your hands or a spatula to press the butter into the cloth to remove any excess buttermilk. The less buttermilk that remains in the butter, the longer the butter will last. Rinse the butter several times until the water moves from cloudy to clear. This is a sign that you've gotten rid of all the excess buttermilk. Now's the fun part. Fancy herb and spice butters cost pennies to make at home. First up, I'm gonna make honey brown cinnamon butter perfect for sweet potatoes, brown bread, and bagels. After everything is combined, store it in an airtight container and freeze for several months or toss it in the fridge for immediate use. Next up is an all-purpose garlic and green onion butter that I love because it infuses immediate flavor into meats or veggies while also preserving the herbs that I grow on my deck. You've gotta saute the garlic first, but then give everything a good mix, and honey, you've made an impressive butter you'll wanna slather on everything. A runner-up butter I enjoy is a lemon balm parsley thyme butter. And don't be skeptical because this combination creates a citrusy season that is perfect for chicken, fish, shrimp, dinner rolls, cornbread. Oh yeah, and your artichokes will never be the same. Now, this is what I call eating deliciously on a budget. The seasonings that I used were either purchased in bulk or herbs that come back again and again each year in my garden. Don't let anyone tell you that homemade isn't worth it. Grandma knew how to preserve butter so that if she made a lot of it or caught it on sale, she knew that she could store it for at least five years. That's because she knew how to make clarified butter, also referred to as ghee. Butter sales coincide with the holidays, so that's the time that I stock up, and you should too. The easiest and least messy method I use to preserve butter is just to use clear, glass oven-safe dishes to bake your butter in at 250 degrees for 75 to 90 minutes. Now with other methods, you have to baby it on the stove, and ain't nobody got time for that. When it's in the oven, you can set a timer and do other things while you wait, but hey, that's just me. And yes, you'll have greasy hands, but don't let those vitamins go to waste. Rub down your arms, elbows, and crevices of your hands, and keep it moving. Once your butter has melted, remove it from the oven and clear as day, you'll see how the milk separates and drops to the bottom and any water boils off. Canned butter doesn't use lactose or casein, so it's perfect for those with dairy sensitivities. Out of the oven, you'll need to skim off the top of the butter using a metal strainer or slotted spoon, or a combination of them both, like I'm using here because I'm just using what I have. Once you get all of that off, you'll need to use a ladle to scoop up the oil and then pour it in a jar. Process for 60 minutes in a pressure canner to make it shelf stable. also knew how to keep a lid on it. That's right, butter that's in the fridge needs to be stored in an airtight container. If you want an innovative and functional airtight butter dish, darling, I don't think it gets any better than this one. Here's why. It has a nice airtight seal that stores two butter sticks or a block of extra wide cream cheese at a time. It's dishwasher safe. It has soft gripped handles and it comes with a built-in knife stored inside the dish with its own slot to keep it tidy and clean. It has scale lines for easy measuring, anti-slip feet so that the dish stays in place on the table, plus the carved ramps at both ends of the holder help you to easily cut and scoop up butter. You just slide the knife up the ramps. I think someone with common sense or who actually cooks a lot made this dish. <laughs> it's not glass or decorative, but it's functional and that's what I love most about it. This and a few of the other things featured in this video are in the description box below. Grandma didn't limit butter to just food. That's why she dabbed medicine pills in a coat of butter to help you swallow them. Use a pad of it as a WD-40 replacement for a squeaky door. Get gum out of your hair or use it as a deep conditioner for dry hair. After a fishing trip or making fish cakes, it totally removes the fishy smell from your hands. Slip off a tight ring, remove makeup, and honestly, a whole lot more. Nana knew that different butters do different things. Those labels have some differences and here's what you're likely to see the most. Grass-fed butter comes from cows that are ranged on grasslands. As such, it contains more nutrients than standard grain-fed cow butter. Cultured butters made from cream treated with cultures like yogurt and allowed to ferment than churned. The result is a fuller flavor with noticeable acidity. Irish butter has a higher fat and lower water count than American butter, so it has a better taste and it's the best choice for baking. Salted and unsalted butters are made from the very same grade AA quality butter, but salted butter has salt added to it. That's it. I mostly get unsalted so that I can control the quality and quantity of the salt that I use. Margin is often used as a substitute or imitation for butter. Modern margin is a highly processed food product made from vegetable oils, while butter is basically a concentrated 
dairy fat. Grandma knew how to prevent food from bubbling over the lids of her pots and Dutch ovens. And that's why she always threw a slice of it into whatever, water, jam, soups. And it works because butter breaks up the starch at the top of the water and allows air to escape. Grandma had no time for this newfangled foolishness about butter not being healthy. Butter is extremely rich in nutrients and compounds. I don't know if it's because I'm a simple gal or was raised by a later in life mother, or grandmothers, and church mamas, but if it don't come from the ground or God, I'm plumb skeptical that stuff like food that has to be manufactured or marketed is actually healthy or better for humans. My cooking leans more towards an ancestral diet, and if you cook from scratch or you want a second opinion about regaining control of what you eat, I highly recommend the book Nourishing Fats, Why We Need Animal Fats for Health and Happiness by Sally Farron Morell. She's the author of the best-selling cookbook Nourishing Traditions, and in this book explains why animal fats like butter are essential for good health and shares delicious recipes for every meal. You know that Grandma felt that the best tech was low-tech, no-tech, home-tech. And she could tell butter temperature just by look and feel. If a recipe calls for frozen butter like for your biscuits, just make sure it's been in the freezer for a few hours and is firm enough to be used with a hand grater. Room temperature butter is cool to the touch. When you touch it, your finger will make it indent, not sink down into the butter. Leave butter out on the counter for around one hour before beginning your recipe. When you need melted butter, avoid a splattery mess or burnt butter in the microwave by just using the stove top double broiler method. Things will gently melt in record time and you won't develop off flavors. I'll see you on my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends.